Hey guys, I'm Sarah, I'm a hospital pharmacist and today we're going to be talking about pharmacy school. I'll be answering the common question, is pharmacy school hard? And just compare and contrasting the pros and cons of a three-year program versus a four-year program. I thought I'd change things up a little bit in this video and just have a chat with you guys while I am prepping for dinner. So let's get started. So first, wash our hands. Now let's get the ingredients ready. The mayo, sriracha. For those that haven't guessed it yet, I'm making a sushi bake. Frost some egg rolls to go with it. So let's just start off with the question, is pharmacy school hard? I can wholeheartedly say yes, it is very difficult. Probably the most one of the most difficult things I've had to overcome. It's not a walk in the park. You know, back in the day when pharmacy school um, was first started, you know, there wasn't as many medications or drugs to memorize or to know. Now there's hundreds upon hundreds, thousands of drugs to you know. No, the do the education, the frequency, the duration, uh, what to adjust, so much to know, and it's humanly impossible to know everything. And you know what's unfortunate and what sucks about it is that when you take your NAPLEX, your board exams, you're it's not an open book. You're not allowed to look up the answers. Obviously, you have to have it memorized. You have to know when to look out for these things, um, which is unfortunate because in real life as a pharmacist you have the ability to look things up and double check a good pharmacist always is evidence-based and double checks you know the literature the guidelines things like that i'll put the frost my shrimp that's what's hard about pharmacy school is that you know even just the foundation when you first start off it can be very difficult just because you're learning all the different pathways of the body and how the medication works on those pathways. And it can be a little bit difficult to comprehend at the beginning if you don't have like a strong foundation in like science or something. So I did have a couple classmates who um, did a non-traditional route, like in college they did like non-science majors. So it was pretty hard for them. Um, to transition in pharmacy school. So having that strong foundation, that science background could really help a lot when you first start a pharmacy school. So for me, I was a biochemistry major. Um, that did help me a lot when I first started like the first year or two of pharmacy school because I had a lot of like chemistry and biology background. So it made the transition easier for me, but you don't necessarily um, need it so you know you can choose an easier science major like maybe just only focus on biology or only chemistry and not not both because <laughs> that major at UCLA was not fun um notoriously difficult unnecessarily difficult so yeah I don't recommend that major <laughs> so what's also difficult about pharmacy school is that it's very very different from college so when you're a college student you know you have a certain amount of credits and classes you need to take, but you decide the hours, what lectures you want. Like, oh, if I'm not an 8 a.m. person, you know, I'm just gonna choose the afternoon class. And back in college, I had all these gaps in my schedule. I'm like, oh, I have, you know, two, three hour free block in between this class. I'm just gonna go to the library, chill, relax. No, you don't have that in pharmacy school. Literally, you are in lecture from 8 a.m. to 4 or 5 p.m and it's like non-stop hours of lecture. And the material, the PowerPoints are like hundreds of pages. It's overwhelming and it's a lot to take in. So I'm just warning you ahead of time, farm school is not a walk in the park. Um, so just warning, just be prepared. <laughs> but now to the most interesting question, the comparison of the three-year program versus the four-year program. So for me personally, I did um, the four-year program. So I did the traditional four years of undergrad college, and then I did four years of pharmacy school. So there are options, there are some pharmacy schools where it's more accelerated and you can finish your uh, PharmD degree in three years. So I just wanted to go over the pros and cons of each, and you know, it's personal preference. Honestly, both programs are great. 
you know, there's no one's better than the other. It's just what works best for you and what your preferences are. So just to get that out there. The main difference between a four year program and a three year program obviously is time. You're gonna finish a lot sooner in a three year program. So that's the pro. You're gonna be a lot younger, gonna finish, be more established in your career a lot sooner. Um, the only hard part is that um, there's less breaks for you throughout the year. So that could be a big con just because uh, one, burned out. You don't have you know those long winter, summer breaks for you to relax, recover. And most importantly, the second reason for that being a con is that you don't have the time to do internships. So internships is huge. So having the opportunity to be an intern at a hospital during pharmacy school was what, was what honestly made me a really competitive candidate when I was applying for residency. And honestly, that internship was what made me who I am today. I learned a lot during the internship. So for me, I can't imagine what I would be, where I would be right now if I didn't have my internship. I went to a four year program I had all my summers open and available to work at my hospital that I was an intern at. And I also interned on the weekends. So having that you know, extra work experience can be very handy, um, especially for networking. And now that the jobs are a little bit saturated, it makes you more competitive for when you're applying for residency or just jobs in general. Work experience can go a long way. So for us, we had summer breaks, you know, the standard like two or three months. I don't remember, it's been a while. Um, my my co-resident, he was telling me he, he did a three year accelerated program. His summer breaks were only a week and a half. So it's, it's pretty drastic, the difference. And for my program, in my, during my appy rotation year, we had two or three week gaps in between some of our rotation blocks. So he just gave us time to you know relax, recover, go on a little bit of vacation during this during this stressful year. Um, but my co-resident powered through. He was in this accelerated three-year program, so their rotations were just one after another after another, and they didn't have much of a break in between. So that could be kind of the con. But at the same time, finishing a whole year sooner, if that is your goal, your goal is to you know. Uh, finish as soon as possible, get start working right away, then yeah, go ahead and do three year program. And maybe financially, maybe it's better because three years of tuition versus four years of tuition. Yeah, I just thought about that right now, actually. Yeah, it could possibly save you money depending on the tuition and the school. I honestly haven't done the comparison, so this is just, you know, uh, speculation. For me, if I had to choose, you know, honestly, I don't think I would have changed anything. I did have a really an amazing experience at my pharmacy school, even though, you know, it was four years. I didn't mind it at all. So I'm shredding the crab right now. It's taking me longer than I thought, but it's also kind of like therapeutic in a way. Obviously, the ops, the con for farm four year program is the opposite for the three year program. So another year. Um, another year of paying tuition, but you know, if, if you're okay with paying another year and you know, you have some family help or you're planning to work at a federal hospital after you graduate like me. So they have the loan forgiveness programs where it makes you eligible for, you know, your loans to be forgiven, then that could be just an option. Like I said, in the end, you know, there's no one, one school, one program's better, you know, it's just up to what your preferences are and what you're looking for and what your goals are. And honestly, for me, pharmacy is such a difficult uh, profession to learn because there's so many medications, so much to really take in. I can't imagine cramming all that I learned in four years into three years. Um, from my experience, but you know, it's definitely doable and some schools have, were able to do it and perform well. So I would say, um, do some research into the school and the program that you're, you're interested in. Cause you know, some schools are able to do the accelerated program and do it well. Um, but some schools that transition from the four to three years 
are having some trouble or like notice that their scores have gone down. So I would be mindful of that and just take a look into their Netflix passing rates. Um, yeah. NABP uh, publishes every pharmacy school nationwide Snaplex passing rate. So that's a good way to kind of gauge you know, how well the school and the students overall are doing. So that's one way you can gauge to see, okay, um, if this program doing well, are the students learning the material, are they taking it in, are their teachers good? That can be one way to determine. they tell me they're scared to get to go into pharmacy because their math isn't the strongest and you know that's a good concern to have because you know there's a lot of math and pharmacy involved but you know you're gonna learn all the basic math and you know equations and things you'll have to calculate in pharmacy school so and honestly I think they're not too difficult in my opinion but I, I could be a little biased I ran out of spirit cake mix, so I'm just gonna crumble up some seed, put that in there. So I got the rice ready, crumbled some uh, seaweed in the middle, or on top. Then I have the crab shredded, well mostly shredded, I try my best. And then we're gonna cut up the shrimp and add that in. Cutting it to small bite-sized pieces. We tried adding shrimp to our sushi bake one day and we really loved it, so that's why we're doing it again. So was I in a pharmacy fraternity? Yes. And you know, what's the point? Is it worth it? Honestly, yes. I would say it helped me a lot when I was in pharmacy school, just because you know, pharmacy school, like I mentioned, is hard, right? There's a lot to know, it's hard to navigate, it's a really stressful period in your life. So being in the fraternity really helped me a lot because I met a lot of older upperclassmen who gave me a lot of studying tips, gave me a lot of helpful study material, and they really instilled a lot of professionalism in us. So during the hazing process, it's not really much hazing, but they try to teach you professional skills and everything that they do is very intentional. So it sounds really silly sometimes, but you know, it goes a long way. And I'm not saying you won't have those skills. You don't join a fraternity. You don't have to, and it's entirely up to you and your decision. I'm just saying that it did help us, a lot of us, develop those skills. I wasn't in a fraternity when I was in college. So in pharmacy school, that was my first fraternity experience and I really enjoyed it. And it was also a good way to make a lot of friends too. You know, when you first start pharmacy school, it's important to find a good solid friend group that you can trust and study with and just kind of help each other and hype each other up and look out for each other. Cause it can be a little cutthroat sometimes, you know? Everyone, hundreds of your classes, your students, your cohort are gunning for the same profession. So obviously there's gonna be some sort of competition. So it's nice to be able to have some solid friends that you can trust. So there's lots of different pharmacy fraternities. Some of them are national. So, you know, almost every pharmacy school will have that one versus some are more local. Um, so only that pharmacy school would have that one chapter or something like that. So for their particular, pharmacy fraternity that I was in, um, it was more local based. So only th that pharmacy school had that fraternity and I wouldn't have changed it at all. So, and again, the joining the pharmacy fraternity really did, I think spearhead my trajectory to become a hospital pharmacist because well, the upperclassmen and my big in the fraternity that I got close to were all inpatient hospital interns. So that kind of the way influenced me to, towards inpatient and really piqued my interest. And eventually I started becoming intern. 
um, at one of the hospitals that they intern at and we became closer and closer and I wouldn't have even thought to apply for an inpatient internship if I had never met them. And for my residency, I honestly might not have even gotten my residency position if the upperclassmen or the people in my fraternity didn't help me have mock interviews, gave me feedback, looked at my CV, um, looked at my project presentations, all those things. So I know sometimes you know, people get really nervous about joining too much extracurriculars or doing too much things in pharmacy school. You just want to focus on school, school, school. I want to do well. But you also have to think of the big picture. Um, you know, at the end of the day, when you graduate, all they're going to see is a degree. They want to see a well-rounded candidate. You know, what's your work experience? What clubs or orgs or leadership experience do you have? Um, what soft skills did you build that from, from your experiences? So if you all you did was just woke up, go to class, go to school, go home, your resume is going to be so empty. It's just graduated from X pharmacy school and that's it. You know, how are you going to make yourself competitive to all the other candidates? You need to be involved. You need to put yourself out there. You need to network. So I know it can be scary and overwhelming. You know, what if I do bad in my classes because I'm too involved? Then, you know, just narrow it down. Uh, for me, I decided to just dedicate one club, one org only. And in a way that shows, you know, I'm loyal, I'm dedicated. And within that same club, I moved up the ranks and eventually became president. So leadership skills, you know, volunteer experience, all within one org. So that's one way you can do it. So, you know, don't try to overwhelm yourself joining like five, six different orgs and clubs. Don't just stay at home and do nothing else as well. You know, enjoy your pharmacy school experience. It's hard, but you know, you can still enjoy it. Okay, so I cut up the shrimp. Now it's in with the crab. So let's mix it. I'm just gonna use this because you know, whatever. Okay. So I always kind of wing this part in terms of how much I add. So I know you need a lot of mayo. That's what makes it delicious. Oh, I have cream cheese. Yes. So I rarely ever have cream cheese, so I'm kind of excited. Because normally the, the recipe requires cream cheese, and I always have to opt out of putting it because I never have it. So finally I have. Cream cheese. Perfect. Is that enough? Maybe. One more scoop. Yes. Finally. Hopefully this turns out good. Soupy mayo with the cream cheese into the mix. Make sure it's well incorporated. Looks good already. So in pharmacy school, I had to move away from home. Um, and I actually really enjoy cooking. So some of the meals I used to cook as a pharmacy student, you know, obviously a lot of it was pasta, so that was easy. Um, I did a lot of stir fries. Um, sushi bake was a fun one that I like to do. So it just kind of reminds me of my pharmacy school days. But honestly, I did eat out a lot because I did study a lot at cafes. Um, that's what my friends and I love to do. So we would just, honestly, we would, my favorite thing that I kind of miss, and it was kind of crazy that we we're able to do that. We would go to a cafe on the weekend, um, go right when they open and just stay there all day studying. We would, and we always had to make sure we pick um, a cafe that has food and good bathrooms and good outlets. Yeah, honestly, it's kind of crazy to think, but I'm kind of a nerd, but I kind of miss those days of just all you have to do, your only task is just study for an exam. That's it. No work, no mortgage, the good times. Now I'm adding in the sriracha. I'm 
I'm trying not to add in too much. My significant other and I, we both aren't very good with spicy food. So I'm kind of scared to like overdo it. But I know it makes it taste so good. We're not building our tolerance. We'll be okay, right? This is the Trader Joe's version. I think it was during that shortage, remember the sriracha? I heard that doesn't taste the same right now, This ever since they changed up the peppers with the whole scandal. If you're not sure what's going on, definitely look it up, it's very interesting. Ooh, look at that, that's good. Okay, so let's pour it into the mix. Hope I'm not forgetting anything. Again, I wing this every time. Delicious. What were we thinking? I'm gonna drizzle some eel sauce and QP mayo on top. Okay, I'm gonna prepare the sides. So I have some cucumbers. I hope they're still good. I think so. I need to cut up some more. I'm actually kind of scared this has gone bad. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you like this type of format where we're just chatting one-on-one -on -one with each other while I cook dinner. I thought I would just change it up a little bit. You know, comment down below if you like these type of videos or you have any questions or suggestions for future videos.